Hello, my name is Aviva and welcome to my Throne of Glass reread reading vlog. Wow, that was a mouthful. So I'm officially rereading this series for the third time around. It's one of my favorite series of all time. I've said that multiple times on my channel. I just love everything about it. Everything that I'm looking for in a fantasy series is like stuck in this book. Like we have an interesting world building. We have a really good magic system. We have amazing characters that I can fall in love with. We have a bunch of romances. We have the Fae, just like everything that I like is all in this book. And therefore it's one of my favorites of all time. I originally read it this time two years ago and then I did my my first reread of it this time last year. So it only makes sense that this time this year, I'll do another reread of it. And this time I decided that I'm going to vlog it for you guys. So I have thought a lot about like, oh, well, well, well how do I want to go about this? You know, because there's so many things I can make this vlog about. Like I can go really deep into like, oh, the Sarah J Mass world and how all this series connects and stuff along those lines. But I decided like, no, because that will probably give me a headache. And while it might be enjoyable for you, it won't be as enjoyable for me to have to like work so hard to think about all this sort of stuff. So I'm making this really, really simple. And I'm just going to give you guys like my very easy and simple thoughts after I reread each book, like at the end of book one, which we're going to do right now, I'm just going to tell you like what I thought about it the third time around. Like, did I notice anything different? Did, did stuff bother me more than it did the first two times that I read it? Stuff along those lines. And hopefully you will enjoy hearing that from me. So this video is going to be extremely spoiler filled, not only for Throne of Glass, but also for Sarah J Mass's other series. Like I have no idea what's going to like shoot out of my mouth. So be aware that this is very spoilery for the entire Sarah J Mass, you know, universe or whatever you want to call it. So with that said, I actually already did finish reading the first book in this series. So I'm not doing this in publication order. I like to read the entire Throne of Glass series with Throne of Glass first and then Assassin's Blade after Air of Fire and then Tower of Dawn after Queen of Shadows. And if you want to know why I read it that way, I'll have a video linked down below, but it's the way that I enjoy reading this series. So it's the way that we are going to do it. So Throne of Glass, I finished this one a couple of days ago and I really enjoyed it. I'm not all of a sudden going to like flip a switch and be like, oh my God, I hated this book. Like, no, I love every single book in this series. Some I like more than others, but like, I'm just trying to like see like, oh, how do I feel about it this time around? Like, has anything changed? And happens to be, I still really love Loved the book just as much as I did the first time around. And I just, this time I feel like I appreciated a little bit more how short the book was. Like, I feel like every time Sarah J Mass writes a new book, they somehow get like longer and longer, but not necessarily more interesting and deep. And I just, I really appreciated how the world building and the story, it just, it happens really quickly, really smoothly, not too info dumpy. And it wasn't too long. I just, I think it was like a perfect amount of pages for the story. And I just, I wanted to point that out because in some of like Sarah J Mass's new books, like a lot of the stuff that I complain about is the info dump or like that there's slow parts in it or stuff along those lines. And I just, I love how her initial couple of books weren't like that. So I just got to give her a thumbs up for that. I also wanted to point out like character wise, how this time around Nehemia did bother me a little bit more. And I think it's mostly because I have read Crescent City now and I had just read it a couple of months ago and Danica really bothered me. Like Danica and Bryce's relationship. I really didn't like Danica. I didn't like, you know, the way that she hid everything from Bryce. And I just, I think she was an extremely bad friend in general. And now that I'm rereading Throne of Glass and I'm seeing how Nehemia had hid so much stuff from Selena originally. And even though she does come clean at some point and, you know, they do share a little bit more, I feel like there was, there was so much secrets between the two of them. And for some reason it is bothering me more this time around than it used to. Like I used to love their relationship and like my heart broke for Selena when everything happens in book two. And this time around, like, I just, I don't know, Nehemia, she's bugging me a little bit more. And I think it's because I'm kind of looking at her similarly as to how I look at Danica. So not a full thought there. I just wanted to point something out and that was that. Then also Dorian. I mean, I've loved Dorian since the first time I read this series. Like I always was like, you know, I was crushing on him. I was so excited when him and Selena got together and I was so sad when they broke up at the end of book one. And I still feel so bad about it. Like I understand why Selena, you know, had to do that. Like not only because she was going to be the champion, but because of everything that we're going to find out about her as we get later on to the series. Like it just, it never would have worked out between the two of them. 
Dorian and I'm fine with that but like I kind of still just love Dorian for like falling in love with her and the way that like he kind of changed himself because he was like he just wanted to be with her and stuff like that and then the way that he got heartbroken because of it like I don't know my heart just breaks for him like I feel so bad for him for like having having had gotten into that situation or whatever you want to call it so I don't know I wanted to point that out and I also wanted to point out how I would definitely have chosen Dorian over Kale and I just don't like Kale so much it's funny because the first time around that I read this series he didn't bother me like everyone was always like oh yeah I'm not such a huge fan of Kale and I just I had never really noticed why people didn't like him and then the second time that I read this series, I kind of noticed a little bit more that like I wasn't as much of a fan of him the second time around. And now that I'm reading it for the third time around, I actually don't like him. Like I'm starting to notice his actual personality and I'm just no longer a fan of him. Like not in the sense of like, oh, I actually hate him, but like, you know, he's very much bothering me. And I now am understanding why people don't like Kale. Like it's hitting me a lot more on my third round of rereading this series. Like why Kale bugs the heck out of a lot of people. And he He's starting to bug me a lot too like the way that he just like chooses to go about things the decisions he makes like I don't know just everything about it I just don't really love him but besides for that that's kind of like all of my thoughts on book one I didn't really have a lot of thoughts you know to share with you guys but that's what you get and I'm going to continue on with book two and I'll update you and share my thoughts when I finish it so I'll be back soon so I finished reading book two and I'm now ready to tell you what I thought about it. So I'm still really enjoying the story. I love how subtly everything is like being built up. I remember the first time that I read this series, I thought that like book one and book two was like its own story. And then all of a sudden we move into like Air of Fire and then like the story completely changed. And I, I always thought that it, there was such a divide right there. But every time I reread it, I realized how subtly everything is actually being built up. And like all of the information was really there right from the beginning. And I just, I love seeing all of the foreshadowing there. Like even like the fact that like we got to meet like Bobby Yellowclaws in this book and like everything that we had learned from her, but then also the way that like it kind of like led us into like learning about like Manon. Well, I always say Manon, but I know it's Manon, but like I, I say Manon like naturally because I grew up with this person who is like her last name was like Mammon. And therefore when I see Manon, I just say Manon, not like Manon, even though I know the audiobooks say it that way. So anyway, I just like how like Bobby Yellowclaws like was the introduction into to like you know the third like storyline that we're going to be following in era fire and i just i really like the subtle world building i just i really have an appreciation for it because i feel like sometimes like especially in like Crescent City, just because I'm very much relating it back to Crescent City, I feel like it was so info dumpy. And this one, I feel like it was just, it was done so well. So I have to like point it out again. And the thing is, is I, I've always very into reading Assassin's Blade after Air of Fire. I just, I think that it's a really good spot to read it in because all of a sudden you're going to jump into Creative Shadows and like everything that was talked about in Assassin's Blade is going to be directly talked about again in Queen of Shadows. And I just like it all being fresh. And I didn't realize how much much was mentioned in like you know the first two books about everything that happened in Assassin's Blade like just the moments of like you know talking about Sam in book two and you know all of the heartache that she was going through still with Sam and like just really small tiny mentions of Assassin's Blade in this book I never really noticed how much was actually in the first two books until I was like doing this round of rereading so I still stand by my word to like read Assassin's Blade after Air of Fire but I do also see why a lot of people are very adamant of reading it first because like there are a lot of mentions even though nothing's like spoilery or particularly or anything like that and like you're not like out of sorts but I am seeing a lot more now that I'm like you know just rereading it for like this time around and besides that I still I still don't like Kale like I still love Dorian I still feel really bad for him about how everything went down and I just I don't like Kale's moral compass like I think that he has like this blind loyalty to the crown and I don't understand why like he fell in love with Selena and even though like everything happened at the end of the book and like it kind of fell apart like the way that he was so disgusted disgusted by her of the way that like he found out that she had magic and like how he felt lied to and he was still somehow in love with her it's like I don't understand it like are you against magic just because of like you know you're loyal to the crown like I just I don't like his moral compass like everything that he does I feel like is just out of like blind loyalty and that very much bothers me like 
I still liked their relationship. Like, I still liked the way that it was built up. Like, I, I understand how, like, they became friends, they became close, and it turned into something more. Like, I see it. But at the same time, I still don't like him. And I'm kind of upset about that because, like, he didn't bother me as much the first two times that I read this book. But now, now he's just bothering me more and more. And, I mean, that was kind of it. Also, like, Nehemia, like, I know that I mentioned beforehand how, like, you know, I don't really like her as much this time around because I am very much, like, you know, relating her to Danica and how, like, she's kind of, like a bad friend for keeping so much from Selena and while I still feel that way a lot like I still feel like it was wrong that she kept so much to herself I do think that they had a better relationship than Danica and Bryce did because they did share a lot more with each other than Bryce and Danica did but I do also see a lot of the parallels between Nehemia and Danica of the way that they were kind of like catalysts for the story like the whole thing at the end with like Nehemia killing herself like and the way that like that kind of like pushed Selena towards like where Wherever, where the rest of the story is going. I feel like Danica did the same thing with Bryce. Like her death was the catalyst to the rest of the story. And I mean, I see the parallels, but I will say that like, I like Nehemia more than I like Danica, but I still have to say like, Nehemia isn't as good of a friend as I remember her being the first time that I read this series. But besides for that, I feel like, you know, that is all that I thought about with this book. Like I liked it. I had a little bit of, you know, uh, awakenings in seeing some of these characters' personalities the third time around. And I'm enjoying the story. Very excited to get to book three. I will update you when I'm done it. So it's been a couple of days since I last updated you guys, but I finally finished Air of Fire and I'm ready to share with you what I thought about it this time around. So I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet in this video, but I have been listening to all of these books via audio. I always listen to the audiobooks when I'm reading this story, but usually I kind of jump like, you know, to the physical and then I'll jump to the audio and I'll kind of do it like back and forth, like whatever I'm in the mood of at the moment, just so that I could get through the story quicker. But happens to be like, this is my third time around. I'm in no rush to read this story. So I've kind of just been enjoying the audiobooks for what they are because I personally think that it makes the story a little bit better like I am not a multiple POV type of person like I have a very hard time like not enjoying like one person over the other like I always like have to choose favorites and then I just don't care for some of the story and then when I'm reading it physically like I always feel like skimming the places that I don't care as much about but now that I'm reading it via audio only I very much enjoy all the storylines like I, I just I, I am enjoying the experience Experience for what it is because somebody else is telling me the story and I'm, I don't feel as much as like I'm wasting my time and I just I got to get to the next person you know what I mean and I feel like that part like that is specifically important for this book because in this book is when we finally split off and we're now following three completely different storylines and we're following so many characters and I just remember like when I would read this book physically like I'd always want to skim over like man in storyline but when I'm reading it like you know via audio like I don't feel that way whatsoever like I am a huge fan of Mammon and I've always been a huge fan of Mammon but like in my rereads like usually I find that like I just don't care as much about her story because I always want to get back to Selena's story or something like that but with the audios like I'm just I'm falling in love with like Abraxo so freaking much I love the 13 I think Mammon is like a freaking awesome character and I'm just happy that I am choosing to like read the entire thing via audio basically. But besides for that, you know, we've got three storylines. So I'm really enjoying Man in storyline so far. And it's funny because like for some reason I thought that we were going to like meet a lead in this book, but like I guess she's only going to like pop up in Queen of Shadows, but like I was expecting her to show up already and she hasn't yet, which for some reason I just I got confused as to like when she's actually going to show up. But in Kale and Dorian storyline, we finally got to meet Adion and he is one of my favorite characters of all time like I am a huge fan of him I love that he is finally here everything is finally coming together we're learning more about the magic and like you know the uprising everything along those lines it's so freaking good and I am just I'm really enjoying all of the storylines for what they are and especially Selena and Rowan's I mean come on this is one of my favorite series of all time and it's mostly because of Selena and Rowan I mean I just absolutely love them I think that the reason why I am a, so much attracted to so many different types of tropes is is because of this book this was one of the first like you know stories that I read one of the first romances that I read when I got back into reading and just the idea of Rowan and Selena just like there's so much to it that I love it's like it's a slow burn they're kind of like enemies to lovers it's kind of like you know a grumpy grumpy and I'm a huge fan of grumpy and like I feel like there are so many aspects to it that I'm just I love seeing in other books and I never realized how much of it is actually in this story like you know we've got the overprotectiveness and I can't even like think of it off the top of my head but there 
there's so much to it that I absolutely love. And that's the, it's the reason why they're one of my favorite, like, you know, relationships of all time. But basically, I absolutely love all the storylines that are going on. And one thing that I remember thinking this time around was one of my favorite scenes from this entire book is the burning scene. Like the moment when like Selena and Rowan, they're sitting and like she's burning the fires and all of a sudden like she burns up and then like everything that happens after that, like, you know, she goes into the baths and things along those lines. And for some reason, I mean, not for some reason, it's only because now I finally read the Addict slash Calloway sister series, but that scene so much reminded me of Daisy and Reich in Hot House Flower. Like, I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but if you've read Hot House Flower, then you probably know what I'm talking about. But I just loved, I just, I loved seeing both of those series, like both of those, you know, moments in the books, like back to back, because I feel like there were a lot of good parallels in that sense. And like, there's a reason why that's my favorite scene from Hot House Flower. And this is my favorite scene from, you know, Air of Fire. So I just wanted to point that out. But besides that, I don't really have many thoughts on this book. Like I'm loving all of the characters. I think, I think, did I not say this, but I think like one of the biggest things that like still bother me is Dorian. And I'm just, I'm a huge fan of him. And I feel like, you know, the start of the series was the start of his downfall. Like he was a prince. He was good looking. He had all of the girls chasing after him. He had money. He had everything that he wanted. He was living a great life. And then all of a sudden, like, Selena comes crashing into his life and then everything goes downhill from him like he falls in love with her and then she breaks up with him and then his best friend falls in love with her so therefore he loses his best friend and he's just heartbroken and then all of a sudden in book three he finds someone else and then again it doesn't work out and like he gets this magic that he can't deal with and like then all of a sudden everything at book three like the fact that like you know the collar went around him and it just I feel like everything gets worse and worse for him and I just I can't help but feel bad for him like I feel like I mean I don't know if you know this but I mean maybe some people know this but I when I read throne of glass for the first time i deep dived into like everything about it and i found out that like sarah j mass actually wrote this series originally when she was i think like 16 or so and like she was in high school and it actually had a completely different ending where dorian and selena actually ended up together and at one point i actually did find like a pdf of it and i didn't read the whole thing because it was very very long but i remember like skimming through it and i was like this story went like in a completely different direction and at like at the original story when she read it like oh when she wrote it for the first time Dorian actually had a happily ever after and I feel like in this round like he, he just gets worse and worse like he does not really get like very much happily stuff like yeah he he kind of like get, like leaves off at the end of like you know all eight books like on a positive note of sorts but like he had to go through a lot in this story and I just I can't help but feeling bad for him the entire time like I just I want to cry for him and I wish that everything that happened to him didn't happen but Besides for that, I feel like that was kind of all of my thoughts on Era Fire. And also, if you're not aware, there are a bunch of bonus scenes for like, you know, the entire Throne of Glass series. And I'll have them linked down below for you because I kind of like, you know, posted something on Instagram and people weren't aware that like, you know, there's a bonus scene for Era Fire where, I mean, whatever, you could read it if you want or either you know what I'm talking about. But like every time I reread this story, I forget that the bonus scene isn't actually part of the story. So every time I finish it, I have to go back and then like read the scene and it's actually actually one of my favorite like mini clips from the entire storyline so I'll have them linked down below in case you're not you know aware of them but there's like you know there's a bonus scene for like before Throne of Glass starts between like Kale and Dorian talking about like going and getting Selena from like you know the Endovier and like there are a bunch of like you know Empire of Storm like bonus scenes and stuff like that and then Air of Fire obviously has a bonus scene so whatever anyway um yeah that is that um nothing more really to say about that so I will I will update you guys when I finish Assassin's Blade. So I finished reading Assassin's Blade the other day and I'm ready to share with you what I thought about this book. So first of all, Assassin's Blade is one of my favorites from the entire series. I feel like Air of Fire, Assassin's Blade, and Queen of Shadows are like my top three out of all eight books. Like I just, I feel like it's like the peak moment of this entire series and I just, I absolutely love it. I also absolutely love reading it in that order specifically. Like not that I think it's bad if you read like Assassin's Blade at a different part in the story, but I really do strongly feel like it is the best best part to read it like while you're reading this entire series like for a, for a couple of reasons first of all I think that you have like a better appreciation and understanding for all of the short stories once you're already like attached to Selena as a character like you jump into the story with Throne of Glass you kind of get to see like you know where this story is going you kind of get to see like Selena as a character you get to see her grow for a little bit and then all of a sudden like at the end of Air of Fire like you know she decides that she is going to like take back her throne and that she is going to like 
like, you know, just be Aileen Galathinius. And then all of a sudden you jump backwards and you kind of get to see like how she became who she was. And I just feel like you have such a better appreciation for those short stories when you read it that way. And I feel extremely like very, I feel very, very strongly about that. I also think that like, you know, everything is going to be directly talked about again in like Queen of Shadows. And I just feel like it's really nice to read all of that back to back. Like it's just all fresh in your mind, especially if you're not like, you know, binge reading it. Like all of a sudden, like, you know, you end air fire. She's on the boat for a little bit. Like I'm pretty sure it takes like a month to get from like where she's going to like back to Rifthold. And I feel like it's kind of like a good break. It feel it makes it feel more realistic that all of a sudden, like, you know, she's on the boat. She's waiting to get back to Rifthold. And she, it's almost as if she's like reminiscing about everything that she went through in the past. You know what I mean? So I just, I feel like it's a, it's a really good spot to read it in because, you know, then you get back to Rifthold and then all of a sudden, like the rest of the story continues and everything is directly talked about. Like we get to meet like Sandra again. And then all of a sudden Arabin is in the story for the first time and I just feel like it's a good moment to read it for all of those reasons and probably even more but you get my point I just I feel extremely strongly about that I'm like sometimes people ask me and they're like oh but why and I'm just like just just take my word for it like I've read this series three times and this is the only answer you're gonna get from me like you asked and I answered you know so like that is my answer and I, I also very th I, I even though I like every single short story in this entire book I do think that like you know the first one is my least favorite so especially like if you're going to start this series off of like that one short story, like I just don't think that it is like the strongest way to start an eight book series, if you know what I mean. So like, whatever. Anyway, I mean, that's just like, that's just how I feel about it, you know? But anyway, so with that said, we've got five short stories and I like all five of them for the first one is obviously my least favorite. And the second one, I very much love, I mean, I love all of them, you know, but like, I love book, like the short story number two, because I feel like it's like, it's such a full circle sort of thing. Like all of a sudden, like, you know, you meet Irene and then like, you know, you just see this little glimpse of like her on her way to like the red desert. And then all of a sudden at the end of the series, it all, com it all comes back and like it circles. And it just, my heart drops every time when I realize like all the little things that had to like play out just for everybody to land where it is. And it just, it makes me feel like it's such a small world. You know, it's like, I feel like in real life, like you always, I always bump into people and I'm like, Oh, you know, this person, you know, this person, like, wow, such a small world. And I feel like in this, like, I feel like this series also has that vibe of like, all of a sudden everything connects. And it's like, it's just, it's a small world after all, you know what I mean? So book two, very like story number two, very much gives me that vibe. And I, I very much love it. Like, especially when I'm going to go and read Tower of Dawn and then all of a sudden, like Irene's going to go and like, you know, show everybody like self-defense moves. And I'm just like, Oh my God, she learned that from Selena and she doesn't even know it. You know what I mean? So anyway, yeah, with that said, um, I can't believe how much I hated Lysandra in Assassin's Blade. Like I remember the first time that I read this series, I absolutely hated her. Like she made me so jealous in like story number three when like, you know, her and Sam were like so close. And even like when everything went down with like her and Arabin, I remember like she got on my nerves so freaking much and I really, really did not like her. And I just, it always blows my mind how much like I love her by the end of this series. And like, that is totally meant to be like her story arch like you're supposed to not like her in assassin's way and then you're supposed to like her like once we get into queen of shadows and i totally like feel that way and i just every time i think about lysandra i can't believe that i still feel so much hatred towards her in assassin's blade every single time that i reread this series and then i end up loving her the rest of the series i just i find it really funny and i mean i remember i told you guys about all the bonus scenes right so like there was a bonus scene for um you know like dorian and kale talking like you know before the beginning of throne of glass like when they're like oh yeah let's go get Selena Sardothian from like Endovier. And there was a little mention of like the fact that he, like that Dorian and Kale had gone to a party in Rifthold like, or like last year or so. And like, you know, he was surrounded by a bunch of people and happens to be, I just find it so funny how like that is the party that was talked about in Assassins and the Underworld. Like it was the same scene that was mentioned and it was just so interesting to see how like Selena, Dorian, and Kale all met like before this entire story, but like it was in Assassin's Blade. You know what I mean? I just think that like, you know, the entire thing, like they specifically in Assassin's Blade point out that like, you know, he had whatever color eyes that he had. And like, I just think that it's very interesting to like see all of the little foreshadowings, even if some people didn't pick it up. So in case you were one of those people who didn't pick it up in Assassin and the Underworld, the girl, the guy that like, you know, Selena is dancing with in the party and then like Sam goes and gets jealous. That was Dorian and Kale. And then if you read the bonus scene and you see the little tiny section of like Dorian mentioning a party that was the party and then 
The last thing that I really wanted to share with you about Assassin's Blade was that I cannot freaking believe that Arabin did what he did to Sam and to Selena. Like every single time when I read the last story in this book, I am still always hoping that it somehow ends up differently. And my heart drops every time. I feel like freaking crying when I think about it. Like I know that it's gonna happen and yet I'm still always wishing that it doesn't go down the way it does. But if it didn't happen that way, then we wouldn't, you know, like get Aileen and Rowan and this entire story would end up happening. So it had to have happened, but at the same time, like oh my god just rip out my heart and take it so whatever anyway that is everything that I have to share with you for Assassin's Blade I cannot go and wait to read Queen of Shadows because oh my god it's my favorite book from the series and um yeah so I will update you after I read that one so I finished Queen of Shadows the other day and I'm finally ready to share with you what I thought about it. So obviously I absolutely loved it. Queen of Shadows is definitely my favorite from this entire series. Like I love Air of Fire and Assassin's Blade like the most out of the entire series, but Queen of Shadows is like on top of Air of Fire and Assassin's Blade. Like it's Queen of Shadows, Air of Fire, Assassin's Blade, and then everything else. But basically I just, I flew through this book. Like I literally couldn't put it down. I kept getting to a scene and I'm like, well, I know what's coming next. So I want to get to the next one. So I just kept listening to it. Literally flew through it I absolutely loved my third time reading this book I feel like this, this is the moment where it really feels like it's a small world after all like everybody is finally coming back together like Adion and like Aileen they finally meet again and like Aileen's back in Rifthold and like his her whole crew is coming together and like Rowan shows up and gets to meet everybody and like even Manon like she finally meets Ali which makes it feel like a small world and Manon even meets like Dorian and Aileen and everybody else and I feel like everything finally is like coming together in this book and that is kind of why it is my favorite. Besides for all of the like amazing moments, like big and small, like everything about this book, really a big thumbs up, really enjoyed my reread of this. And the only thing that really bothered me about this book was Kale, which he's been bothering me this whole time. But like, I really didn't like his broken freaking moral compass. Like the whole idea of that he has to save the humans from Aileen. Like what if she gets her magic back? Like what is she gonna be coming into? Like that's not his problem. Like stop being so freaking weird about it, you know? But like besides for that, like I really did enjoy everything everything about this book and it's funny because I actually noticed that like in this book they mention the bonus scene from Air of Fire which I kind of thought was a little bit wrong but now it's making me realize why I thought that the bonus scene was actually a part of the actual book and every time I read it I forget that it's not actually part of the book because somewhere in Queen of Shadows I forgot exactly what it said but it was something about like oh yeah one night like you know a bunch of people came to have dinner at like with them like Rowan and Aileen you know at the place that they were staying and I forgot what it was called but either way the point of it is, is that they literally like specifically like pointed out the bonus scene and I'm just I find it really weird that it wasn't officially in book three and yet they specifically mentioned it in book four so whatever besides for that um I don't really have much more to say about this book I know this was like quick but at the end of the day like I loved everything about it like do you want me to go into like the quick details about like every moment I cried like when Aileen went to like Sam's grave or like the amazing moment when like you know Rowan basically put on the oil like and said to Arabin like oh yeah thanks my skin was dry like literally so much about this book I loved like the fact that like you know Lysandra like Aileen bought off Lysandra and Evangeline's like you know thing from her mistress so that like you know she didn't want anybody in her court to be owned like freaking wanted to tear up like everything about this book I really absolutely loved I'm not going to go in and mention every small little detail but basically I loved it. Have nothing really more to say. I am going to be reading Tower of Dawn next, but I'll tell you why I read it next when I finish it so that like I, I'm sure about my feelings. But either way, I am going into that book next instead of Empire of Storms. I feel very strongly about that. And yeah, that is about it. Nothing more to say. I'll get back to you when I finish Tower of Dawn. So I finished reading Tower of Dawn the other day. I don't think I told you guys this before, but this is actually only the second time that I read this book specifically. I read it for the first time, obviously, when I was like reading the entire series for the first time. But when I did my reread of it last year, I decided to skip this book only because like I just didn't want to spend the time reading the side story and I already knew what was going to happen. So I'm just like, I'm going to skip it this time around. But this time I did reread it and I am very happy for the refresher. And I wanted to tell you a couple of reasons why I do still think that it is really Really good to read it before Empire of Storms. First of all, I don't think that necessarily Queen of Shadows ends off on a cliffhanger where you're really itching to go back in and like see what happens to like Selena and Rowan and everybody else next. I think if anything, there is more of a cliffhanger for Kale and knowing how he's going to end up being. So I think that it is better to read at Tower of Dawn right after Queen of Shadows just for like the vibe of where the story is going. And also, I really don't like the cliffhanger that happens at the end of Empire of Storms. And I just... 
I can't imagine having to sit through the entire Tower of Dawn after knowing that cliffhanger and just knowing that like Kingdom of Ash is waiting for you to read. You know, I just, I don't think that you will be able to enjoy Tower of Dawn as much when you're sitting on the like cliffhanger from Empire of Storms. I also don't think that Tower of Dawn has any specific spoilers that really would ruin Empire of Storms for you. Yes, there are a couple of out of context spoilers, but I, I specifically was listening for them this time and I listened to all of them and I'm like, you know what? If you don't know what's going to happen, I really don't think that any of this makes a difference because like just knowing the out of context stuff of like what might have been happening, like with Selena and everybody, like at the same time on the other continent, I don't think it ruins absolutely anything for you for Empire of Storms. So, I mean, I just, I think that like Tower of Dawn is like my least favorite book from the series. And I had a really hard time getting through like the first half of the book. Like I remember the first time that I read this also, like the first half was way more boring than the second half. And I just can't imagine like, you know, you get to the end of Empire of Storms and all of a sudden like you have to sit through this entire Tower of Dawn book. Like I just would, I can imagine myself like trying to rush through it just because like I want to finally get to the end. And it's funny because I still kind of felt like rushing through it because I just wanted to get back to like Selena's story and everything. So I can't even imagine how much more it would feel that way if I was just like going to be going into Kingdom of Ash after that. So whatever. With that said, I actually was thinking, I never really thought about this before, but I thought that if anything, I think that the perfect way to read Tower of Dawn might actually be tandem reading it with Empire of Storms and like the beginning of Kingdom of Ash. Like I know that there's somewhere online where you can find like which chapters to read in what order. And I actually think that like that might be the like best scenario for this only because like I just think that like when I was reading Tower of Dawn, I, I just kept wanting to go back to Selena's story. It's like I might have been enjoying Tower of Dawn, but it's like I wanted all the other characters. Like Kale isn't enough for me personally. So I think that if I did tandem read it, like that might actually be like a solid way to go about it. It, but whatever. With that said, I also just, I wanted to tell you that I remember that the first time that I read this series, I didn't recognize Irene for who she was. Like, I'm very bad with names. So even though like I knew her from like, you know, the second story in Assassin's Blade, the first time that I read Tower of Dawn, I didn't realize who she was to this entire story. I thought she was just like a random girl. And I remember really enjoying slowly realizing who she actually was and how she was already connected to like Selena and everything. But either way I mean even though I did like Kale and Irene's story I definitely think I liked like Nezrin and uh Sartak is that his name I definitely liked their romance a lot more and I really I, I did very much enjoy everything that connected Tower of Dawn to you know the entire rest of the story like I liked the whole idea of how like you know all the information about the Vogue was like you know in the Tori Te Te Tesme or whatever you want to call it and like all the history about them and the first times that they came to the world was in this book and I think that they did find a lot of really good information like to bring over to help with the war and everything like that and I think that like it was a solid book like it's a solid part of the story but like at the end of the day it is my least favorite because it is just a side story and I think that if it was somehow mushed into being like you know tandem with the other book like with Empire of Storms and everything I think I wouldn't have been bothered by the story as much and that's actually why I'm thinking that the next time I read this series I might actually try it out that way but Besides for that, I don't really have much more to share with you. I mean, I did like to see the whole thing with like Kale of how he slowly started to realize that like, you know, magic can actually helpful. It's not only a bad thing. Like, I mean, it kind of bothered me because it's like, oh, finally when he needs magic for something, now he's going to look at it from like a different point of view. But still, I kind of liked how he realized that like he was kind of blaming Aileen for everything, even though like she didn't deserve it. And it was only because of like him as a person. So I liked seeing like, you know, the epiphanies that he came up with and everything like that. I Did I say that wrong? Epiphany? What Whatever. everything that like you know he realized about himself I liked slowly seeing that but like besides for that I feel like I don't really have much more to say I mean it was a fine time I'm happy that I'm like finished with it though like I I really was itching to get to Empire of Storms and that's why I think like tandem reading might be the way to go next time but either way we'll see I'm gonna get ready and you know get started on Empire of Storms and I'll update you when I'm finished with that one 
So I don't know what it is, but there's something about getting to like the end of an eight book series that kind of just makes you want to be done with it already. I've been reading this series for like over a month now, and I don't feel like I've been doing it really so. Like I feel like every single day I listen to like more and more of the audiobook, and I happen to have ran through Empire of Storms, and yet for some reason I feel like I also like blanked out at half of it. Like I just always had it running when I was doing everything, and I've been trying really hard to concentrate on everything that I'm listening to because since I'm doing it only through audio, like I didn't want to just like waste my time. I really wanted to concentrate and 100% like listen to this story. And even though I totally did that with Empire of Storms, like I listened to the entire thing for some reason I finished it. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, what did I listen to? Like, I really should start over. Even though like I totally got all of the important parts. Like I got all of the little things too. Like I totally like didn't space out, but at the same time, like I somehow finished this book feeling like I completely spaced and that I should probably like go back to the beginning and just listen to it once more. I'm not doing that but that's kind of how I felt the second that like I finished reading this book specifically but whatever either way I really did enjoy this book I love this book it is again I feel like I say this for every single one of my books for every one of the books in this video but like I feel like it is one of my favorites at the same time only because like Alid and Lorcan are probably like the best thing about this book like the fact every single thing that like Alid and Lorcan did like they entered a freaking carnival and like just the way that like Lorcan is able to be like whipped by Alid somehow like I just freaking die for them. I also really did enjoy the moment that like Aileen got to Skull's Bay and like met Rolf and anything like that moment with like, you know, when like Sandra and, and like Aileen was pretending to be the same person. He's like, what, what, what? I love that part every single time. Like it gets to me every time. Like the second that I knew it was coming, I'm like, okay, I'm literally going to like stare into space and just like listen to this moment because it's so freaking good. But either way, I really enjoyed that. And I also really liked um, Gabrielle and Adion's first meeting. I mean, there were so many things to like, but like specifically, like I remember like really concentrating on like these little moments that I'm pointing out for you. And I really liked that moment because like it was such a harsh moment for like Adion, like the way that like he treated Gabrielle and just knowing like how it's all going to end at the end of Kingdom of Ash. Like it just rips out my heart a little bit. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, like I, I don't even really have any words for that. But besides for that, like I really don't have much to say. Like, like I said, I kind of like spaced out on this book a little bit. I didn't really, but like I kind of did. Like I just, I, I remember specifically like the second after like Lorcan and Elise were making out in like, you know, the marshes and then like up to the point where like they got to like Aileen, like literally I was just like, I don't really know what happened like in that moment, you know, like I do know what happened because I've read it before, but like I, there were like, there were a couple of moments that like I just, I blinked on a little bit, but like, what am I going to do? Like once I get to the end, I just, I kind of feel like I want to finish it. You know, like I've been doing this for a little bit too long and I'm ready to be done. But at the same time, I'm really enjoying my reread. I'm like totally happy that I'm redoing this, like, you know, rereading the series. And I, I'm so excited for Kingdom of Ash that I'm actually already halfway through it. Like I finished Empire of Storms yesterday morning and the entire day yesterday I was listening to Kingdom of Ash. So I'm already like halfway through. I just got to the point where like Aileen and Kale and Irene met for the first time again and literally I'm like I'm coming off of bawling my eyes out like I literally finished that like five minutes ago and now they're like planning for war so basically like I'm I'm down to finish this up and I am basically like running through until the end so I'm gonna continue with reading Kingdom of Ash and I will get back to you once I'm done so I finished Kingdom of Ash last night and I am ready to share with you my thoughts and finish up this vlog because we have been making this for way too long. I think I started this series basically right about a month ago and I can't believe it took me so long, but at the same time, like who the hell cares? I enjoy every single second of reading this series. I literally finished it last night at like 11 PM and I was like, let's start it over again. Like I, the way that it ends, it just makes you want more and like the only way you're going to get more is by rereading it. And I literally felt like, okay, let's go restart it. But I'm not going to do that because like, that's going to be too much work. But like, I enjoy my reread so freaking much that I'm already ready to redo it again. You know what I mean? But either way, I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the last book in this series. And first up, I just wanted to say that like, I definitely enjoyed part one over part two. Like I'm just not particularly like a war person. And part two more or less is just like the ending of the war and like fighting and everything like that. And even though like there are amazing moments in that part, 
part of the book. Like the whole time when like, you know, a lead goes and saves Lorcan and just like everything about it. Like, you know, I, I do enjoy the second half of the book, especially the ending. Like when everything is like, you know, tying itself up, I very much love that. But the fighting specifically is not my favorite. So therefore I 100% did enjoy it part one over part two. And obviously I love this book. I loved everything about it. Maybe minus the fighting parts, but you know, you got to do the fighting parts to get to the end. So it's all good. But one thing I very much did notice this time around, which I don't think I've ever made this connection. Well, I've only read it twice, but my third time around, I finally made this connection specifically. And that is, is that Asar is the person that helped Elid and Lorcan and Rowan and everybody basically get Aileen out of Doranel, like when she was kidnapped. And I just specifically did not realize who Asar was. And Asar is the person that is from the bonus scene from Air of Fire that we have now seen as of the end of this series. That specific bonus scene, like referred to twice. And I just cannot believe that it wasn't part of the series. That is probably why I keep thinking that it's actually part of the book. And and I just feel really bad for people who have not like specifically like read that bonus scene. They're not going to see the reference that like they're particularly pointing out the bonus scene, you know, like I was specifically like, oh yeah, I met Aileen that one time when I visited like, you know, uh, whatever it is that that place was in air of fire. I keep forgetting the name of it, but you know what I mean? And I just, I think it's a little bit wrong. Like it kind of upsets me now knowing that twice in this series, the bonus scene was referred to and it's not actually part of the series. And I don't even have it in my book. Like I don't have the special bonus book like I had to go and find that online so that upset me but I also just wanted to say that like I now realize that Asar is a person from the bonus scene that you know had used to like you know go out with Lorcan or whatever and she is the person that helped so it's like all first circle you know like everything everything connects at the end I also noticed that well I mean I don't think I noticed this I think honestly I saw this somewhere online but either way I noticed it this time around and you know when like after Aileen is you know uh there they got Aileen and they're in the tunnels and they're grabbing all of the jewelry and then Aileen grabs the rings to give to Rowan because it's like oh yeah you know humans they give rings out when you know they get married what was it I have it specifically written down I th the thing is that green is for her and red is for him okay so what I had was that um his favorite color is green and her favorite color is red and she got a green ring and he got a red ring so basically they took their favorite colors and they gave each other the rings like she chose like her favorite color she put on him and his favorite color she put on her why was that so confusing to say but I didn't want to mix it up for you and basically that is from the bonus scene as well the same air fire bonus scene right at the beginning of the bonus scene they're like they were just having a conversation like you know oh what's your favorite color and he's like, well, my favorite color is green. And she's like, well, my favorite color is red. And then, you know, the little, little, little pointy things of like, oh, now they gave each other the rings of their favorite color. And I just, I had to point that out because I never freaking realized that. And like literally mind blown. But besides for that, I also, I did not, I realized this, but I did not really realize that technically Dorian, Kale, and Aileen have not been together since the end of Crown of Midnight. How crazy is that? More or less this entire series are three main people. The people who started it all were not together. How nuts is that? Like I realized it, but at the same time, like I really, like I sat down and I thought about it for a second and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Some of them might've been together for like here and there, like Dorian and Kale were together in Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows, even though like Dorian really wasn't there for Queen of Shadows because like his mind wasn't there. And then Aileen was with Dorian in Empire of Storms and then Kingdom of Ash until they were all together in Kingdom of Ash. But like my point is, is like we actually spent this entire series more or less without our three like favorite people together. Well, maybe not favorite, but like our three means, our three means together, you know, how freaking nuts. Also the moment that Lysandra meets her uncle like holy no, no 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 well that's a good point but no not not that point but the point when Lysandra's uncle meets Aileen that was more of a trip for me like the moment that she realizes like you're the merchant and she's like you're the assassin you know what I mean like that whole trip also another thing about Lysandra's uncle is I okay this entire time I was reading this I don't think I mentioned it in this vlog yet but I was tripping out because I think it was an air of fire that Manon went and got like the spider silk for um for Abraxos I thought that she killed a spider then like I could be wrong but like I thought that I read that like she killed a spider and I thought that that was the spider that took the years from Lysandra's uncle and this entire time like once we met like 
Lysander's uncle, I'm like, wait, why hasn't he gotten his years back? And he only gets his years back like, uh, like all the way, I don't know, all the way at the end of the book. And I realized that it was just like, it was the wrong spider and that Dorian is actually the guy who killed the spider for Lysander's uncle. And it just, it was something that I was tripping out about the whole time. And I was trying to find the time when the spider was going to get killed because we met spiders here and there. Like, you know, Nezrin met spiders and then like Manon met spiders and now Dorian met spiders and Dorian is the one who killed the spider. At the same time, I really thought that like the spider that like was going to give the years back was killed all the way in air of fire. And I was tripping out this entire time of like, when is this guy going to get his years back? You know, like whatever. Either way, I finally figured it out. It took me long enough. <laughs> but either way, besides for that, um, Another really like cute thing that I realized was, you know, when we were at like um, Chaos Family's home and um, a lead was going to get Lorcan and she took Helios, the horse, like uh, what was the name? It was like Farasha and Kale used to call the horse like Helios's horse or whatever. I could have the words wrong, but either way, it did trip me out because even like the book specifically pointed out how like... Um, you know, oh, it's so meant to be that I was calling this Hell's Horse because Elite and Lorcan are the two people that are talked to by God. And it's just like the way that it full circles, like specifically in the book, how they even mentioned it. I'm just like, I love all of this little foreshadowing. Like we met this horse like way back when. And it's like, it was always called that. And then now it finally like all made sense. Like it was all meant to be like, this horse was meant to be here at this time to go and save Lorcan, you know? Like I just think, I just love how everything full circles, you know? And another thing that did trip me out was, um, how Dorian's father was actually named Dorian. Like, not much to say about that, but like, trips me out every time. Like, when all of that comes full circle, too, of like, oh yeah, he was nameless, but like, he actually remembered his name to call Dorian, like Dorian. I'm just like, <laughs> hurts my heart a little bit every time, you know? But besides for that, I think that was more or less everything that I wanted to share with you. I've been talking about this book long enough. I've been talking about this series long enough. And the last thing I wanted to leave you with is another thing that I noticed this time around that I never noticed before. But book one and Kingdom of Ash, so as in book one and book eight, the last sentence in the last chapter is, tell me tomorrow mind freaking blown just that just the fact that like we ended book one with like her, like aileen which was she, selena at the time was basically saying like oh yeah tell me tomorrow and then in kingdom of ash she tells rowan like oh yeah tell me tomorrow you know i mean it's not the ending of the epilogue it's the ending before the epilogue where she says tell me tomorrow and i'm just like whoa never realized that but like freaking trip but either way besides for that that's really all i wanted to share with you um for throne of glass i do think that aileen and the cadre are my favorite of like all of the characters like i just love like her thing of like the blood oath and like she's got all the cadre on her back like rowan and lorkin and fenris like i love fenris i also love gabrielle and oh my god so sad okay whatever either way i could keep going like should, do you really want me to like you know keep spewing my mouth i don't think so so i'm gonna stop myself here but either way um i appreciate it if you made it to the end of this extremely long throne of glass reading vlog but if you did enjoy watching it and you made it to the end then leave me a comment down below let me know that you know you enjoyed watching it because i did work a very long time on this video but either way i hope that you enjoyed watching me as much as I enjoyed reading the entire series. But with that said, thank you for watching. Give this video a like if you have not yet. Also, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And either way, thank you. And um, until next time, enjoy reading.